With WAN 2.2 due to be released, I think at 8pm UTC today, I figured a quick refresher on WAN 2.1 would help get those cogs ticking, ready for the new update. These are some examples you can make already for free at home, each in around two minutes, or even faster if you've got something more up-to-date than my now rather venerable 3090. There have been a few updates since my previous WAN 2.1 video-to-video, image-to-video, text-to-video, and consistent character Laura training video guides, all of which I can make thanks to the support of my awesome Patreons. And now, thanks to a couple of awesome new Lauras, Pusa V1 and Light X2V, we can make these AI-generated videos even faster. Like the name suggests, Light X2V helps with anything to video tasks, such as video to video, by making the steps a bit lighter, as all you need now is six steps plus. It has an Apache 2 license, making it awesome. Pair that with Pusa V1, which also helps reduce step count, but additionally powers up the WAN 2.1 text to video model with both video to video and image to video abilities. Yes, you don't need a different model for each task as you can just use their LoRa. A very smart idea. I'm using Comfy UI here as it supports all the cool stuff, but there is other software available too. I really like the Workflow Browser as that gives you loads of templates to act as a starting point for any of your creations. In this case, however, I used a particular Pusa example workflow from Kijai's WAN Video Wrapper as the starting point for the new workflow build. This is because it has loads of different features you don't get with native Comfy UI. This includes things such as block swap, and it has much easier to use image and video to video nodes. This does mean installing a bunch of custom nodes, just like I've detailed in the note there, but I've tried to keep those requirements as minimal as possible, so all you need is those four, and you should be good to go. If you're looking to build this yourself at home, then I'll go through all the bits in this video, or if you'd prefer to just grab the workflow, then my Patreon is where all the action happens. You get videos, and you get workflows, and I can keep making them for you, thanks to your support. I use what I call the rodent method for organization, the really ordinary divisions easily networked together. Essentially, it's everything in its own box, clear and simple, and add as many boxes as you like. You will have seen me use it before, but now you know its name. First up are the LoRa loaders for those two power-ups I was talking about earlier, Pusa V1 and Light X2V. The example workflow comes with a note which has links to download the two files required, meaning all you need to do is click to download. Easy peasy. You can vary the strengths of each LoRa, but a good starting point is just as they are here. The next group also loads models, but this time the WAN and T5 ones, with the various files themselves being available via the link in the note at the top. The bypassed node in purple you can reactivate with Control b and it helps speed up generations, but does take a little bit of time to compile first. I'm not using it myself as it's a bit fiddly with a 1390, but if you've got a better card, it should work without all the hassle. Block swap helps to save that precious VRAM, and even on my 3090, it helps to have this on. 20 is okay for me, but lower VRAM cards, well, I think you can go all the way up to 40. Give it a go and see what happens, basically. The T5 text encoder also has some VRAM saving options with device offload and quantization if required. The WAN video model has much the same, but also with an attention mode to help with some performance too. I'm using Sage Attention as it's a two second install on Linux, but if you're using Microsoft Windows and so perhaps struggling with it not working, then you can just click on the attention mode. And if you use SDPA instead, then that will work without any hassle. Sure, it isn't as fast, but then you also don't have to fight with Microsoft Windows to get things working. The VAE loader is pretty straightforward, and if you want to add your own get and set nodes, like I have done here, 
All you need to do is right click and there they are at the top. You can add a get node or you can add a set node. Prompting is very straightforward with WAN, with the positive prompt being at the top in this particular node and the negative prompt underneath. Force offload here is another VRAM saver, so I keep that enabled. Also in this workflow, I added both text to video and video to video options, hence the little RG3 group bypass up there. You can do all three at once or any combination you like. It's simply a faster way of bypassing a bunch of nodes than highlighting them all and pressing Ctrl B. Text to video first, as this is the most basic setup. It takes all the stuff we just went through and uses some empty embeds to generate your video. Pick a width, height and number of frames and Robert is your father's brother. You can go above 81, but we're keeping it simple here. For the sampler, six steps is fine with CFG1. We're actually ignoring the negative prompt there, so don't stress too much about that. Plus, it makes it faster because we are ignoring the negative prompt. For the most part, you can just leave it as is, though do feel free to play with various seeds and schedulers. The output video, I think, is pretty decent quality. As mentioned, these all take under two minutes on a 3090, even though it's the 14B model. Decent armor, nice power up, a reasonable green glow there. I'm certainly very happy with that. For image to video, it's much the same, apart from instead of it all being empty embeddings, we're injecting an image as the starting frame. You'll need to pick a size in the resize image node and upscale method if you want to keep the image proportions where the crop happens and all that kind of stuff. Totally up to your creative vision and the image you're using. As you can see, this time the video generated is very different and the green glow sort of builds up out of her chest. Some nice subtle head and eye movements. Again, I'm liking that a lot. For video to video, we build on image to video, but this time none of the embeds are empty as we're using frames from the video. As I've got in the note down here, for video to video, the denoise strength is important. Try the range 0.75 up to 0.95. So here in this example, I have the denoise strength on 0.87. Another thing you can play with is the noise augment strength there currently on zero. So if you increase the noise, that will make your video a bit more noisy and make it easier to change and add other special effects. The output video in this case is also fairly decent. It mostly follows the input video there. She lifts up her arms and normally where she's doing her hair, she then sort of instead puts on a holographic mask. Also quite cool, I think. To step up your game even more, why not add some LLM power to your prompting? This time I'm going to be using Olama locally with this IBM Granite model, which also has an Apache 2 license. And if you see there, the Q4 of the 2B model is just 1.5 gigs, so it's super tiny. Unfortunately, this does need a few more custom nodes as well. Like you can see here, I have Comfy UI, Olama, and also Comfy Roll as well. The advantage here is I can now do creative prompting uh, thanks to this agent command here. We've got an expert director, producer, and cinematographer gracefully describing its knowledge in the cinematic domain by perfectly describing my prompt using British English, because that's how prompts should be done. Of course, it's the proper thing. And uh, there, here we go. So I can basically now just type in whatever I like in here. So here I've just done science fiction colors free, bring life to the imaginary, mixing metals matte and gloss, so futuristic comes across, mix metaphors and keep it tight, a synthwave vision in the night. And thanks to the power of the large language model, that will basically turn it into a prompt for me. I've also added a little optional prefix box there. So if you wanted your output to always be cinematic, that would add the word cinematic to whatever the large language model produced. All you have to do is then wire that output into your text prompt there, and the output from the large language model will become your positive prompt. Very easy. And of course, if you don't want it, you can just take it off. And there you go, you're back to normal prompting. 
for the text to video output for that particular prompt there. We've got a sort of synth wave effect and a curious dancing robot. All right, that's not bad. For the image to video option, I've chosen this particular one, which is nothing synth wave at all. So let's see what it's done to that. Ah, interesting. Once again, we have the robot and the sort of purpley synth wave colors, but it does seem to sort of nicely transition from my original image where the robot's walking out of it and then becomes into another world. Hmm, very nice. Look into my eyes for this video to video option because you will think it is really cool. Yes, we've got the spirals because people like spirals, don't they? So you can use, of course, any type of video as an input. And for this particular case, I've put the denoise strength all the way up to 0 0.95. And now all you have to do is simply welcome your AI companion and we can work together. There you go then, a super simple three in one, maybe add a large language model or whatever you fancy really. Actually, in this case, one thing I did add was this extra video helper suite node. So that takes the custom width and custom height and just passes it across to that because I'm lazy and I couldn't be bothered changing it all the time. But then you may prefer changing it all the time because that's giving you better fine grain control. So all options are available. Anyway, there's so many different things you can add and hopefully once I've had time to test the new WAN 2.2, I should be able to bring you even more cool things to test at home. Have fun. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.